Hey, what's up golfers? Today I'm gonna to show you a super simple workout circuit you can do, and all you need are some resistance bands. Okay, some people call them strength bands. There's lots of different kinds, but resistance bands or resistance tubing is a fantastic way to still get a workout in. Uh, maybe if you're tight on time, you're tight on space, maybe you're traveling. Uh, bands are great because they're very versatile. They're portable, you can take them anywhere. So if I take you know two resistance bands, I can just throw them in a suitcase or a duffel bag. Um, and I just need an anchor point. Like if you have a door anchor and you can attach them at a low anchor point, medium anchor point, sometimes you don't even need something to anchor it onto if you wanna anchor it around your foot. So again, they're super versatile, portable, easy, inexpensive way. And again, there's, there's another pro. Resistance bands are pretty inexpensive compared to free weight. So if you don't have a gym and you're just starting out, maybe you uh, want to start investing in a home gym, start with a set of strength bands or resistance bands. Uh, I personally like the strength loops, okay? Uh, some people would call them, or it doesn't have a handle attached to the end. You can get um, handles that do attach to this so you don't actually have to hold the band because it will kind of pull on your hand a little bit. So if you want to um, have a handle to hold, that's totally fine. You can grab those, but at least two resistance bands, maybe a light and a medium one to start is great. Um, and we can get started doing just a, an exercise that's gonna help your posture and upper back strength. So super important to have good posture and stability in your upper body when you're playing golf because for a lot of the shots or all the shots, you're gonna be bent over to some extent. We need to be able to rotate. So if, if I try and rotate without being in a good posture, so I'm not really using the muscles of my upper back, you can see I can't, that's about as far as I can rotate. But if I just lengthen my spine and get those upper back muscles engaged, you can see I can rotate a lot further. I'll show you this way. Again, I'm gonna slouch a little bit. That's about where I reach my limit. If I just lengthen the spine out, boom, I've got another 15, maybe 20 degrees of rotation. So just by strengthening those upper back muscles, it's a really, really great way uh, for you to improve your golf game and your postural endurance, which is really gonna help on those last few holes of the back nine when you might be fatiguing a little bit. So we're gonna take the band, again, you can have handles on it if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna put it under one foot. This is just a split stance row. So from here, my foot's gonna provide the resistance. So this isn't really a lower body exercise. I can add a lunge into it. The band isn't gonna add too much resistance as I come down because it goes slack, but when I come up, there's some tension on the band. And now I'm gonna stay in that sort of hinge position from my hip. I'm gonna pull those shoulder blades together down and up, squeeze back. So when I'm squeezing back, I'm not pulling up with the handle. So you can see when I pull up, you know, my elbows come out. I want your elbows to stay tucked in and you need to push that chest out. It's also gonna, having this lead leg forward, it's gonna, should put some stress on this glute. So you should feel that you're hinged from the hip. I'm not bent at the knee a lot here. So the butt's gotta be back behind your heel. So I feel it here and I feel it in that upper back, down, up squeeze and hold up, feel like you're opening that chest up. And then you're just gonna repeat that same thing on the other side. Again, get the band even underneath your foot, split the stance, you can come down and up and make sure that butt's behind the heel, chest is over top of your shoelaces, squeeze back, down and up, open the chest up and squeeze that upper back. Depending on the thickness of the band, you could do anywhere between six to 12 of these each side, and you'll feel your body really warming up as you come down and up. Gets the lower body working a bit, gets this lead glute and leg activating, and my upper back and shoulders, upper body posture really opening up. So that's a great way to modify the row. If you don't have an anchor point to hook it onto, you can just use your foot. So I'm gonna have the band here still, and I'm going to loop it around my feet. If you don't have a mini band, most people know it's just the same version as this, but a lot smaller diameter. I can just take the full length one, grab it here. So I'm gonna go kind of crisscross. It's gonna give me some resistance between my feet and I can do what's called our butt burners here. So we're gonna feel this a lot in the hips. I'm gonna keep the same width of stance, get a little wider, step out a few inches, step in just a few inches. Common mistake most people make is they step out but then they step in a lot. So I take the resistance off the band. So keep your width of stance and you step out and step in. 
the same amount. So I'm keeping that tension on the band. I really feel this in the muscles in my hips. As I go out to one side, you can do about 15 to 20 out one way and then go back the other direction. Okay? Stay in that good athletic posture, side to side. Those are our butt burners again. So that's really gonna help increase the stability and strength in those muscles in the hips. It's gonna help you maintain that good athletic, stable stance. Okay, strengthen the hip muscles, really, really important. Now let's get back to the upper body. Maybe a lighter band. This one you will need to anchor it probably in a door frame. You could tie it around a doorknob, or if you have a door anchor, you can probably have it between waist and shoulder height. I'm gonna have that here, square my stance up, make sure the anchor point is just outside shoulder width. I'm gonna straighten my arm and then walk forward till I feel like I'm really challenged to keep my elbow straight and I've gotta activate my lower body and core so that I don't get pulled in the direction of the band. So it's part of its anti-rotation. I'm gonna keep myself here and not get rotated to the left. And now I'm just gonna try and get a good amount of tension and I'm gonna make some circles here, nice and smooth from my shoulder. So I'm pressing that shoulder blade forward, working on those muscles deep in the front of the torso. These are my serratus anterior muscles to help control your shoulder blade. I'm pushing that shoulder blade forward and making some circles. So I can go eight circles one way. Again, elbow stays straight. And then I'm moving right from that shoulder capsule. So I can go eight in the other direction. Once we're done those, now we can finish off with some presses, maybe move forward a bit more and press, 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 hold, push forward and finish off with eight of those. And you really feel your shoulder and upper body working by the end of that. Keep that lower body stable. As you progress, you can make your stance a little bit narrower, okay? So that, those are the serratus punches, but we're doing it in a circle. Okay, eight in each direction, and then you can finish off with your single arm punch. Okay, and lastly, from here, we've got our lower body anchor point. We're going to do a squat exercise. I'm going to loop my legs in again. If you had a mini band, you could use a mini band, but I'm going to bring this around the, the knees just above the kneecaps. And I'm going to back up so I've got some tension. And from here, I'm going to work at squatting. Now, when we do this, we're gonna screw the feet into the ground. Now when I say screw the feet, they're not actually gonna spin out. You're gripping the ground with your feet, but you should feel your foot kind of torque inside your shoe. So right foot screws clockwise, left foot screws counterclockwise, and you, when I do that, you'll see my thighs turn out a little bit. That's gonna help you engage those muscles in the hips and the glutes. So screw the feet into the ground, activate, and then you're gonna drop into a squat, drive the hips back, Keep the chest tall and then drive up. So keep that stretch on the band. Inhale down, exhale up. If you need more tension, you can get it there. If you wanted to load yourself here with a weight, like a little kettlebell or dumbbell, you could add a goblet squat to this. Initially, I would just work on, this is kind of training the hips to be here so we're not in this position in the squat. We're using those hip muscles. It's gonna allow you to sit deeply into that squat. Come all the way up, full extension. Inhale down. Exhale up, inhale down, keeping that tension on the band. My big toes are staying on the floor. I'm screwing the feet in the ground, but I'm not letting them lift up. That's important that we keep that connection with the ground all the way down, all the way up. When I come down, I'm keeping that core braced up. And again, you can increase the resistance by just adding a weight right here. So those four simple, simple exercises, you can use the band anytime, anywhere. Get yourself a quick workout and you can do that for two, three, four rounds. You could probably finish it in anywhere from 10 to 25 minutes. Get yourself a great workout. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, follow for more and we'll see you next time.